Hello, my name is Bobby, and today I'm going to be taking you through a demonstration of ScriptRunner for Confluence Cloud. Firstly, let's talk about what ScriptRunner is. ScriptRunner is an add-on for your Confluence environment. However, it would probably be more accurate to call ScriptRunner a toolkit. ScriptRunner provides you with the tools to allow you to customize, automate, and administer your Confluence instance. ScriptRunner also gives you the ability to write custom scripts to personalize and customize your Confluence instance even further. Scripts are written in Groovy, which is a language born from Java, and your scripts will interact with Confluence through Confluence's REST API, the documentation for which can be found online. The majority of ScriptRunner features are only available to Confluence admins, but there are elements that are available to others, which we'll cover in this demonstration. So firstly, let's take a look at how ScriptRunner looks. So if I were to go to the administrative section in the top right hand corner, I will get taken through to this page and you can see on the left hand side you have ScriptRunner installed and listing all of the features here. When you select any ScriptRunner feature, the features are also then listed across the top for ease of access. We're currently looking at the browse page. The browse page gives you a list of all of the built in functionality that ScriptRunner provides. So this is functionality that requires either little or no coding experience. And you can filter these based upon the sort of thing you would like to achieve. We have administration, automation, customization, and extension, which are the pillars of what ScriptRunner provides. So now let's actually go and take a look at some of the features. The first feature we're going to talk about is going to be the script console and built in scripts. So the console is a tool that allows your administrators to write and create scripts that are executed once over your entire Confluence instance. So this is a writer script, press the run button and have it execute. From the console, we get built in scripts. Built in scripts are scripts that are commonly used across our entire user base. And rather than have people build their own versions of these scripts, we've decided to build them into Confluence to allow users to get immediate value out of the tool without having to write any code whatsoever. So these are easy access to tools and actions most frequently used by ScriptRunner users. So let's have a look at both of these features. So if I go to the script console, you can see that I'm given a box here, which I am able to write my script in. So this is my script. Once I've finished writing my script, I can just click who I want to run as and then click the run button and it will execute that script. For some examples of what this script can be used to do, you can see we've got some examples. You may want to create a single page in a space. You may want to create a space itself, get all spaces or get template blueprints. This line of code allows you to get the body of any template and then use it and manipulate it as you would like within the code. Built-in scripts, which were derived from this. As you can see, we have a number of built-in scripts here. These follow the same principles of just executing once. And you can see some of the more common value items that we have here, such for example, bulk purging the trash from your spaces, renaming your labels in bulk. So taking a label and renaming them either over an entire space or an entire instance, copying a space, taking an existing space and reproducing it exactly as it currently exists and so on. So for this example, I'm actually going to be using the rename labels built in script. So you can see here we have hello as a label for this page. So I'm actually going to just say it over all spaces. So over my entire instance, but I could make my selection a bit more specific if I wanted to. I want to replace hello with goodbye. I can now click run and I'll execute over my entire Confluence instance. So it's a really powerful and really straightforward tool to help you manage your labels if you find yourself needing to change a label over an entire space or instances or multiple spaces. So the labels have been renamed successfully so I can go back to this page and I can refresh it. And you can see now that the label will be updated to goodbye. Next, we're going to talk about advanced space functionality. So advanced space functionality is a number of built in scripts, but we've made them available to your space admins. 
So what this means is that space admins have a number of built-in tools that allow them to perform common tasks that your space admin might need to do. However, because these are only built-in scripts, they are not able to write any code. This functionality, writing code, is functionality limited only to your Confluence admins. So if I go to my space admin, so let's just go to space settings. And you can see that we have a script runner feature here under manage pages. And this takes me through to my advanced space functionality page, which again, as you can see, we have a number of built-in scripts here. Similar ones to what we just saw for the admins. So renaming labels, bulk purging trash, deleting all the attachments in a space. However, you will only be able to run these scripts over the space that in spaces in which you are an administrator. Next, we're going to talk about listeners. Listeners are event based scripts. So, when actions are performed within Confluence, events are transmitted on the back end. Script Runner, specifically listeners, gives you the ability to listen for those events and write scripts that, are exec that execute when they are detected. This is your automation tool configuring your Confluence environment to react to what your users are doing and continuing on that action based upon your business logic. So for example, if I know that if a user performs action A, they then need to go and do B, C, and D, what I can do instead is listen for action A and automatically perform B, C, and D for, for them. So let's have a look at how that looks. So if I go to script listeners, you can see that we have a couple of examples here. We're gonna look at the checking for company language one. So looking at a listener, we have the ability to define the events that it executes on. So these are the events that Script Runner can detect. So page created and page updated for this specific example. And then a script that will be executed as a user you would like to define. So for this specific example, what we are doing is anytime a page is created or updated, we are scanning that page for any forbidden words and we are either replacing it or removing those words depending on what our own business logic is. So this could be used, for example, if we have a profanity filter that we would like to enforce in our Confluence instance, we'd like to make sure people do not swear, do not say certain words, or even do not say certain company secrets that we don't want published on our Confluence page. We can have a script here that catches that whenever a page is created and updated and cleans that up. Other examples, you could have it so that if someone creates a page with a specific title that then goes and creates a number of child pages or a space or anything like that, anything that is linear in terms of the functionality that should happen. The next feature to talk about is going to be scripted jobs or scheduled scripts. These are scripts that you can define to run at specific times. So maybe this is a script you want to run every hour, every week, every second Monday of the month. This gives you the ability to automate and have script runner perform those repetitive tasks that maybe you as administrators are currently performing yourself manually. Gives you the time to offload those, to have script runner run them for you so that you can then use your time doing other things or more productive things maybe. Especially powerful for administrating your environment. So this is an, on top of listeners, which is having your environment react to what your users are doing. This allows your environment to almost administer itself and keep on top of the things that need to be kept on top of. So let's have a look at the scripted jobs. So if I go to script jobs here, we have a scripted job available, which is called deleting old versions. So let's have a look at what this does. So this is scheduled to run every Sunday at 12 a.m. So we can look at how the scheduler works. It's plain English, so you can define what days it runs at and what window. We only provide a window. Um, this is because of limitations in the technology. We can guarantee that your script will run in this window. We can't guarantee when it will run exactly to the second. However, more often than not, you'll find that your scripts run towards the beginning of this window. We could also set a monthly schedule if we wanted to. So we could say, like I said, every second day of the month if we wanted to. 
So what does this script do? So this specific example is getting all versions of a page that are older than four weeks and removing them. So if you have a large confluence instance, pages making multiple changes, obviously every change creates a new version of that page. This allows you to keep on top of those versions to make sure you don't find yourself with hundreds or thousands of versions of every single page that you have. Obviously this script could be used as is or it could be modified depending on your needs, but as an example of the sort of automated, ta automated task that you can use scripted jobs for. So those three features really complete the core of Script Runner's automation functionality. Now we're going to look at a couple of features that are powerful, but not really involved with the automation ecosphere. So the first thing we're going to look at is going to be macros. So with Script Runner, you get three macros, um, popular macros in your Confluence instance. So page info, add label, choose label. These are available installed in Script Runner day, Script Runner day one for all of your users. So you can see here, I've included the created date of this page. As a, as a macro, we can have a look at that. So you can see here page info, and we just define exactly what information we want to show. So the created date, commentators, created by, etc. On top of providing those three macros, we also give you the power functionality to be able to create your own custom macros. So if you find yourself needing or wanting a macro in your Confluence instance and you can't find it elsewhere, can't find any other add-on that provides it or your script runner doesn't provide it, then we give you the ability to go and actually create your own macro for your company to use. Let's see what that looks like. So if I go to macros, you can see that we have the three macros that are built in um, and come with script runner for Confluence. If I click on create a custom macro, I then get given the ability to write a script that creates a new macro. So there is, there is documentation about this and how to create the format, etc. There isn't an example on this environment. However, it's a very powerful tool that obviously allows you to create macros at will, depending on your company needs. Another feature that is also available and we're going to talk about is fragments. So fragments allows you to customize the user interface dynamically by adding web fragments. So this allows you to add elements onto the page for every user to see um, that are controlled entirely by yourself. So let me show you what that looks like. So if I go to script fragments, I currently don't have a fragment on this environment, but I can go to create. I can say, I want to create a fragment that impacts the demo space. And I want to create a web panel or web item, let's say panel. And then I can define where I want that to be in the header of each page or in the footer of each page. The same goes for the web item does have a few more elements in which you can use it. Um, but we'll look at what the panel itself does first. So if I click and add a panel to the header, a single URL, it's going to ask me for a URL. I'm going to use ours. Ours doesn't work, but it will show you how it functions. So if I save the changes here, that fragment has now been added and I refresh this page, you'll be able to see that we have an element inserted in the top of the page. Obviously, as I said, our, our URL doesn't work, but you can see how this element will now be added to all pages in the demo space. So this could be really useful for, say, for example, a, an announcement page. You want everyone to see an announcement regardless of where they are in Confluence. You can use this feature to do that. You don't have to add a URL. As you saw, you can add separate HTML, CSS, JavaScript URLs. So you can add almost anything in there because you can build your own essentially mini web page in that fragment. The next feature we're going to talk about is script variables. Script variables allow you to define what most developers will recognize as global variables for your Confluence script runner installation. What this essentially allows you to do is define a variable name and then give that variable a value. And whenever a script is executed and it has that variable name in there, at point of execution, it will swap that value out for whatever you've assigned to the variable name. So let's have a look at how this looks. So if I go to script variables, you can see here we have a JIRA API token. 
Now, an API token isn't something I want to hard code into a script for a number of reasons. Um, I don't want it publicly viewable. It might change. I don't want to have 40 scripts that all use this API token and then they all become broken and need to be manually corrected when that token changes. So what I can instead do is define the variable name Jira API token. And whenever I have a script that is using that token, all I have to do is type in this variable name. I can then assign this variable name the value of the actual token. So when it comes to execution, it uses the correct value. Another example might be, again, if you have 40 scripts in your Confluence script runner installation that are accessing Jira, you obviously need the Jira URL. If that URL changes for whatever reason, you don't want to have to go and fix those 40 scripts and correct the URL in that code. So instead, I could define a new script variable called Jira URL. And I could say, this is my Jira instance as a value. I can click to save it and it will save that as a variable that you can then go on to use in your code when and if you needed to. So that was a quick introduction to Script Runout for Confluence Cloud. This doesn't cover all of the features. If you are interested in viewing or learning more about the features that we have covered here today, or learning more about the features that haven't been covered, please go to our documentation in which you can find a list of all of the features, a description and more detail about all of them. Finally, we are aware that a number of you will be looking at Script Runner for Confluence Cloud as a migration effort from your on-prem instance. So we do have a number of resources available. So if we go to this migration page, you can see that in the documentation, we do have obviously the documentation for um, Confluence Server slash Data Center and Confluence Cloud for comparison. We do also have a migration hub in there as well to allow you to get more information about migrations between the two. Finally, we do provide a service called Scripting as a Service. This is obviously a paid service in which we will take your scripts that you have for your on-prem Confluence instance, and if possible, translate them into the cloud version, which is obviously going to be using a different API, so they do need to be rewritten. My name is Bobby Bailey. Thank you very much for your time, and have a great day.